class. I did not record yesterday or uh, Monday. I did record, right? Um, uh, but then we reviewed that yesterday as well. So I think we're all good. I think I think you're close to ready, right? I think you're really close to ready. I, I don't agree with the all-nighter. I guess some of you might. Um, but I'd rather you sleep. I think the brain works a little better if you sleep. Um, so this is uh, day two, final exam review. And I'm looking at my list. I, I took a photo of that list, so I'll have to go back to it in, uh, in OneNote. And I'm pretty sure we, we reviewed the McLaurin series, integrating with the McLaurin series. We did a couple of nice problems with them today as well. Uh, uh, power series uh, and with a radius of convergence and an integral test. And we did the separable diff, diff EQs. Uh, remember, I'm not going to give a slope field or a, a, a use of on that. It's going to be it's going to turn into two integrals from chapter five, right? You're going to after you separate everything and split them apart and then integrate both sides. One one problem will be a, a topic from chapter five, and the other problem will be a, to a topic from chapter five to find your general solution. So we only have really to talk about today improper integrals, volumes by shells, uh, disk and washer, and maybe integration by parts. Everything else has kind of been talked about. And But if you need a recap on something that, uh, other than that, please let me know. If you're worried about something other than that, let me know. I'm happy to talk about anything you want to talk about uh, today. Uh, so let's start with our, our volumes, right? Right, and these are, are cylindrical shells. Right, they're they're uh, cylinders, cans of soda, just the outside edge, almost like you know those opener can openers you use. Like say we're we're having hot dogs and beans, right? We open up the can of beans, pour the beans into the pot, and then open the other side as well. That's a cylindrical shell, right? So it's that open open shell, um, open circumference, and it does have a thickness, right? That thickness could be uh, delta X or delta Y, but when we when we start stacking an infinite number of them together, we get a DX or DY. Uh, so the the main thing is, right, uh, that when we do a shell, we do a shell method, we're going to be parallel to the axis of revolution. So if I'm saying I'm going to rotate this region about the y-axis, then my, my rectangle has got to be parallel, right? So if I take that same region, right, same region, and rotate around the x-axis, my rectangle is now uh, parallel to that x-axis. And here I'm seeing a delta x, and here I'm seeing a delta y. Uh, what about the, the height of the triangle? What about the height of the triangle? That is a, 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 a upper minus lower, right? And what is this one? What is this width here? Right, that's a, that's a right minus left. And tell me something about right minus left. What am I doing? Solving for what? Very good class, x. So I'm doing an x sub 2 minus an x sub 1, right? I need one other thing for my, my volume by shells. I need uh, uh, that radius of the, of the can of beans, right? Because I'm stacking a bunch of cans, like the Russian dolls thing, right? So I need a radius from the axis of revolution to... Uh, right, I need that radius from the axis of revolution to the rectangle. I'm not big on putting a big shift in this. I'm probably only giving you one with an axis of revolution 
um, uh, as an x as an x or y. So in in this case, in the in the in case a, I've got a radius of x. In case b, I've got a radius of, of y. But again, I would have to think of right minus left there for my radius, or upper minus lower for my radius on the on the second one, right? Our general idea is that our volume is going to come from the sum of 2 pi r times the area of the rectangle, right? So, and it's all of the rectangles, right? So from n equals 1 to infinity. And uh, so our volume really becomes the sum of all of those pieces, so 2 pi r of uh, the height and the base of the rectangle, right? So in case A, upper minus lower is height, base is delta x. In case B, right minus left is the height and the base is delta y, but it's turned sideways, right? And so, so again, for case A, we're going to have volume equals 2 pi times the integral of, oh, I forgot that, A to B here and C to D here, right? So 2 pi A from A to B of uh, uh, x times uh, y2 minus y1 dx. Right, y2 is the first function, the upper function, y1 is the lower function. And in case b, uh, 2 pi times from c to d of y, x sub 2 minus x sub 1, dy, right? So now my functions are just switched there. So it's important that, you, you, you know, you're able to do these things kind of in that order. Uh, draw the region. Figure out what the axis of revolution is. What should your rectangle look like? Can you find, are you integrating with x or y? Can you find that the long uh, piece of the rectangle, can you find the radius, right? Go into the calculator, that type of thing. Yes, you with me here? Uh, I'm sorry, I got a chat. Oh, David, you're sending that to everyone, right? My list. Yes, I just posted it. Yeah. Um, well, for your reference, but I posted it on Discord yesterday. Nice, so. nice. And and so no slope field. I'm just looking at your list, right? No slope field. No, uh, uh, no, I don't know why I thought I saw Simpsons rule. No Simpsons rule. I took that off just for some space, some time. All right, let's do, let's do an interesting volume by shell, right? Um, um. Let's see, uh, let's see what on my last semester's test here, last semester final. So, uh, oh, I didn't put a shell on. I only put a disk on. Let me, so let me go back to the one before. Yeah, I like this one. So it says I, I've got, this is uh, from 2019. Um, this is a long test. There's 15 questions, but, uh, you know, they didn't, they didn't uh, turn into something 
That's horrible. Uh, uh, I don't really think it's that much longer than your test. It's definitely a little bit longer. Uh, but this is a uh, uh, fall 2019 final exam. And it's kind of 12, 13, uh, it's kind of numbers 13, 14, 15 all together, but we're just going to do 13 and 14. Uh, so I, I'm looking at a, a region. In number 13, I say, I want you to find the region bounded by uh, ln of x. y equals 0. Right? Height of 0. And x equals e. So that region bounded by, right, that region in here. That's the area I'm interested. Uh, and, and of course, that just comes from the integral of, of, of what uh, that area is. The integral from 1 to e of ln of x dx, right? And so we, we've done this one several times. This one is by parts, right? Everybody with me here? Anybody have it memorized? This is uh, x, ln of x minus x. Right? So, and I just did that part by parts. Does anyone want to see that by parts? We're, we're going to review by parts today, too. So, Sarana, yes, you would like to see it? You can chat yeah. it. Yes, okay, no problem. So, so this is number 13. The region is okay, I'm assuming, right? Uh, certainly we could graph that on our calculator. X equals E on the calculator can be graphed, but it's not easy to do it. Um, on Desmos, that's very easy to graph. Uh, the 1 to E, is that clear to everybody Where how I'm getting 1 to E, right? When, I'm really just asking when does L of X equal 0, right? And of course it's uh, uh, at 1. And, and because I'm doing dx, I'm, I'm using the x-axis and going from a to b, right? Okay, so we've got our Liotte list, and we'll put this in our review when we do it. So my first thing I see is a log function, right? So that's my choice for use of. Whatever I see uh, in my Liotte list first, that's what I'm picking as my, my u. So I got a u as ln of x. So du is 1 over x dx, and v is the integral of dx, which just turns out to be x. Right? Ln, once ln of x is taken out, what's left just my dx, so dv equals dx, integrate v equals x. So now I should see, so this, I'm doing, I'm doing a step ahead here. I'm doing a step ahead. Uv, so v times ln of x, that's my uv, minus the integral of v du. v is x, du is 1 over x dx. And so you see there, I just get the integral of 1 minus the integral of dx. And of course, that in, integral is x. And there, so there it is. There is all the details of, of that. So, Serena, I'm I am going to go through that list of uh, review of integration by parts. I kind of did here, but I didn't write anything. I was just saying it. Right. All right, so we got that region. So number 14 in my test says, uh, let me find it, sorry. Number 14 in my fall 2019 test says, find the volume of the region in the previous problem using a shell method when rotating about the y-axis. So I'm forcing your hand on everything here. I'm saying, okay, let's rotate around the y-axis and let's use a shell, right? I, I do like you drawing pictures, right? So you can see it's empty on the inside, 
and this outside piece would be solid, right? Almost like a speaker in a car door kind of thing. So I want to use a shell method, right? And so, like, if I draw my rectangle perpendicular, remember, that's what I want to do, outside parallel to the axis. If I ghost that one particular shell, you can see that one little, uh, that's a tuna fish can to me, even though I, I don't like tuna fish. Uh, but I, that's, that's the can I see all the time. I maybe uh, can see water chestnuts. <laughs> I'm just thinking grocery store, you know. What other can looks like that? Cat food. Right? I don't have a cat, though. I think my, my dog would eat the cat. So that's one particular shell. And so when I'm looking at that one shell, I need to find uh, the, the radius of that can. Right? So the distance to the, the that thickness of the can. And I need to find the height of the can and the thickness of the can. Right? How is everybody doing here? So my volume is going to come from 2 pi of the integral from 1 to e again. I can tell I'm doing dx. How can I tell I'm doing dx? The thin part of my rectangle, right, is, is horizontal. It's in x direction, right? Or, or just looking at the, the two explanations I gave you for the shell, when your rectangle is parallel to the y-axis, you're integrating in terms of x. So I know I have a dx. I know I have an x as my radius. And my function, the, the height of that rectangle is simply uh, ln of x minus 0. So just ln of x. So not, not too horrible. Do we agree with that? Do we agree with that with the picture? Adrian, you okay with this? Adrian. Yo, Adrian, you okay with this? Okay, so guess what? We're by parts again, right? Anybody need more explanation on this this particular piece? Everyone okay here? So uh, by parts, what's my uh, my U choice? It's going to be Ellen again because that's the first thing on my Leonte list, right? And then DU is one over x dx. Uh, DV is everything left over. So x dx. And I'm going to integrate those to get v. So x squared over 2. I don't need the plus c yet, right? Because I'm when I go by parts, I go back into uh, another integral, right? uv minus the integral of v du. So I can get the plus c from that last integral. Uh, but of course, it's this is a uh, we're actually finding uh, a number here, so we don't we don't need that constant of integration. So what do I get for my volume? I get two pi times uh, u v. So x squared over two times ln of x minus the integral of v du. So x squared over two, one over x dx, all evaluated at e and one. I tend to be a little bit lazy with my my uh, bounds of my integral. If you look at how the book does it, it's like they're writing it very proper all the time. So here I would have to, if I was writing it like the book here, I would have to say evaluate it at e and 1, and here integral from 1 to e, and I'm, I'm just saying, uh, I, I know I have to do that. Let me Let me just save a little bit of notation. Um, so 
uh, this last interval is pretty easy. What do I get? I get uh, one half of the integral of x dx, right? And so that's what x squared over 4. So 2 pi all times x squared over 2 ln of x minus um, x squared over 4 evaluated at e and 1. Uh, of course, I can pull out a 2 now. A it's up to you, right? It's certainly up to you, whatever you want to Whatever you want to do is fine with me. You don't have to do your arithmetic the way I do my arithmetic. Uh, if we get to the same place, great. So I usually, when I'm grading this, I'm going, okay, did you get the integral right? Okay, good. Did you get the same volume as me? Okay, great. And then maybe I'll just do a quick pass and say, is there any weird notation or anything missing? Or, uh, you know, but I, I, I tend to grade the final a little bit uh, a little bit easier because you've made it here right we started with 24 we're down to what are we down to three six nine seven uh, nine 13 17 we're down to 19 uh, but really it's only 18 18 of us left so so 2 pi uh, I've got e squared over 2 ln of e minus e squared over 4 uh, minus 1 half ln of 1 plus 1 over 4. I'm just doing all that in my head. You don't, you don't care, though. That's 0. That's nice. And ln of e is 1. certainly could take a 4 out downstairs and I get 2e squared minus e squared plus 1 so final answer pi over 2 times e squared plus 1 and there's my there's my volume by shells there's my volume by shells so I think that that should clear up uh, everything uh, for that volume by shells. I certainly could do an another one today. Uh, you know, we got another hour and ten minutes, so there's time. Um, let's Professor, is it? Yes. It's going to be either a dishwasher or a shell, or or everything, or, or both. Or everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you'll specify like which. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So let's talk about the disc and washer as part of the review, right? So we reviewed a shell. We got pictures. Hopefully, I mean, I didn't put any words in here, but there is kind of a step-by-step, -step, right? Uh, draw region, uh, axis of rev, draw the rectangle, right, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you want you want some kind of once I draw the rectangle, it gives me everything. Once I draw the rectangle, I know what I'm integrating for. I know, you know, I know if I'm looking for x's or y's, etc. So, so that's really a key that you get to that rectangle. And then I, I would like the region drawn. I'd like, like the volume drawn, you know, as, as best you can. So when we draw it, will we always be able to visibly see that it's either or or all three? Well, I can't ask you to do all three with one problem because if it's a disc, it can't be a washer and vice versa. Uh, and and remember, when we're, we're stacking coins, whether they have holes in them or not, which is our disc method, we're using pi r squared. And we're, when we're using the shell method, we're doing 2 pi r. Uh, yeah, so they will look different. And I'm, I'm going to draw out the disc and washer right now. Um, so I, I, I kind of think you're, you're trying to make it a little bit more complicated than it is. Um, right, when I say I'm going to do one or the other or both, um, if, if I, what I give you is a disc, I can't give you a washer. <laughs> right? If, if the region we make is a solid region, then there's, there's no holes in it. I can't, it can't be a washer. 
right? And then, uh, you know, I have to be careful that you can do the integral, right? So there's some, so I have to be kind of real picky about what integral I give you to make sure it works, because some integrals are, are very tough to do. Um, Uh, can you show the final answer for uh, that last one we did? Yes. I want to verify. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got e squared plus one all over to all times pi over two. Nice. Thank you. So let's look at disk and washer. Let's look at pictures, right? Let's look at uh, so disk and washer. I think I have to do disk first uh, and then washer because I, w I, I would like you to make sure you have a disk uh, with a rectangle that's vertical and a disk with a rectangle that's horizontal, right? So so that we can so so let's just talk about the disk first, okay? So so nice and simple, right? Uh, I want to do a disk method uh, with this region, and I'm going to go about two different axes. Okay. So, so when I rotate this thing around the y-axis, right, I'm going to get a Hershey kiss here, right? Kind of, kind of a little melted in the car, but you can see that it's a bunch of coins stacked on top of each other. All the way at the bottom here are those Kennedy silver dollars or whatever. Right? Somewhere around here is the Susan B. Anthony. Right? There's the quarter. I can't remember. Is Susan B. Anthony bigger than the quarter or smaller than the quarter? I don't remember. Right? Bigger. Bigger, yeah. So, so you can see I'm just stacking coins here. Right? I'm stacking coins here. Uh... But what the key here is that uh, the shells are parallels, disks are perpendicular. So if I'm rotating here, so there's half of my coin. You can see it, half of my coin. When I rotate that rectangle around, I get the whole coin, right? So, so, so in this particular case, I have a delta y, and I have, again, a right minus left. And um, I'm really just thinking of the radius of the coin, right? So I'm going to get my volume from pi, uh, pi r squared and the sum of, of uh, the rectangle area. And um, I, I don't think I like my sum in the inside, but it's okay. You know what I mean? Because the radius is changing with each rectangle, so I need that kind of. Do you mean the cross sectional area, or? Charlie, say it again. Do you mean the cross sectional area? Yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Yeah. If I look at that cross section, so if I, uh, if I cut this. Hershey kiss out like that and turn it sideways. I'm going to see a circle. So there's my pi r squared, right? So if I rotate this around the x-axis, again, I want to be perpendicular, right? Uh, the cross section is easy to see, right? Remember, this is just the top half of the rectangle here. Right, this this rectangle is is that rectangle in the in the green piece, and then this one is clearly I have a delta x and I have an upper minus lower. Uh, so case A, case B. In A, I'm going from uh, C to D. Sorry, the volume is C uh, is two. Is pi r squared from c to d of that right minus left uh, 
uh, dy, right? And in, in, in the other case, that's that's volume here for case A, and volume for case B is pi from A to B, right? Of of my upper minus lower, oh, squared, right? The radius squared, sorry. dx. What's going to be the difference between disk and washer is that washers are coins with holes in them, right? Uh, who's got a coin? Who's got a, a, a coin with holes in it? I, I know China does. China has coins with holes in them. Sometimes the holes are squares. Uh, Canada might. Canada. I, I'm not sure. I've seen Canadian coins. I've never seen one with a hole in it. But if you if you've oh, seen no. it, yeah, if you've seen it. No, um, I'm thinking the. It's like an octagon or hedron. What? Oh yeah, they add the outer. Yeah, they do have an outer edge one that's not circle, right? Um. Professor, are you recording this? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, so let's uh, do 15 from that test that we just did because that's a disk problem. So number 15 says, this is from fall 2019. Number 15 oh. says, so we, we just did 13 and 14 when we did shells. Now we're doing 15 here. The solid of the revolution created in the previous problem has an empty interior volume. Find that volume using a disk method. So we're going back to that same curve here. So this is a fall 2019 final exam. Number 15, right? So I'm going to take that same particular region, right? Remember ln of x from 1 to e. And by the way, where do my heights go? from 0 to what height here? When is ln of x equal to e? I'm sorry, when, uh, when I plug in e, what do I get for ln of x? I get 1, right? So, uh, but it says I want to talk about that interior region, right? So, so remember when I, when I rotated that outer edge out, I, I kind of said that the inside looked like a car speaker, right, in the, in the door, or on the floor, I guess, if you really want a lot of speakers. <laughs> um, so, uh, looks like a rice bowl to me, like or something, like a soup bowl that you would have, like a, oh my god, what's the name of the soup? Miso, I'd have some miso out of that, right? If I was at a Japanese restaurant. Um, what if I was at a Thai restaurant? What would the soup be? Like some lemongrass. I can't remember the name of it. So, but that's that particular region's empty. But I'm saying, imagine that we could fill it up, right? Let's find that volume by disks, right? So again, we're rotating around the y-axis, but we want to we want to get a perpendicular rectangle if we're going to do it by the disk method. Is that clear to everybody? Now, look at that cross section, right? So let's cut that whole cross section out, right? Let's cut that thing out. It should be very clearly looking like a coin. And my rectangle is going to give me my radius, right? So no hole in it, right? So not a washer, it's a disc. I thought we were doing the other area. We're doing the area from one to e. so, Yeah, no, we're doing we're doing the area. So we're, so we're rotating around the y-axis still, right? We're still using that same curve as below. Right, we got we got this area and we rotated to get the volume. Now I'm saying I want the interior volume. So I want I want to use this area. I want to use this purple area 
and rotate that around using a disk method, right? And if it's not clear on the test, ask me, please. It's not a big deal to say, Robert, which region are we talking about? I don't know, right? So I'll say, well, let me see your picture. Let me see your paper. And you can hold it up to your phone, and, and right? Something like that. We want to make sure our phones are charged or there are places where we can easily plug them in. If I start to lose power, tell all your friends to stay the heck away for two hours. Don't text me or call me, but better yet, put it in do not disturb mode. You'll still get all your texts and emails and notifications. Just when you turn off your do not disturb, they'll all be there, right? Um, Make sure you're, you have your phone in a place that I could say, hey, turn it a little bit left or a little bit right. Uh, we did pretty good last time. We did pretty good last time with all this stuff. Okay, so I've got my axis of revolution. I've, I've drawn that area of interest. I've drawn my rectangle. And now I have to figure out what, what's going on right what is my radius? Uh, what are my bounds? I think I already have that. It's the volume from 0 to 1 of pi r squared dy, right? What's what's telling me dy? That, that, that smaller uh, side of the rectangle is along the y-axis. So that's telling me it's a delta y, and when I go to the integral, it becomes a dy. Now my R has got to be a, a right minus left here. And that is an X sub 2 minus an X sub 1. But X sub 1 is 0, so kind of nice, right? X sub 1, right? So, th so this is X sub 2, the ln of X, right? And the X sub 1 is this axis, X sub 1. So it's X sub 2 minus 0. And what what is that function? It's Y equals ln of X right? So it's what x sub 2 equals e to the y. Is that clear to everybody? So my r squared turns out to be e to the y squared, which is e to the 2y. Nice. And this is, this is a calc 1 interval. Right, this is very easy. How are we doing? Disk method. Any clearer now than week three? Can you explain one more time the x of two and x of one? Yeah, so I'm I'm I know I've got a rectangle that's parallel to the x axis, right? And so I'm just trying to get that right edge from this right edge and this left edge from this piece down here, right? And that's giving me that, that dimension of the rectangle. And, and why am I doing that? Just because I'm trying to re remind you all that you have to solve for x. So I, I, I only know this right-hand edge as y equals, right? But I need it as an x equals because I'm, I'm differentiating in terms of y not in terms of x. So I got to I got to do that inverse function there. Name does that help? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right and, and when I, when I get to this point I should see it, it makes sense. There should be no x's in there. If I'm differentiating in terms of y, x's don't make sense. Right? So it should have a function of y instead of a function of x. Um, so this is a pretty easy uh, uh, yeah, integral. I, I, I've, got, uh, I've got a u equals 2y, so du equals 2dy. So I need a 2 and I need to cancel it with a 2. Right? I think all of that's real easy for us now. Should have been easy in Calc 1, but it takes long, a little bit longer for some of us. That's fine. So now I know I have an e to the u there. 
I'm going to do that without that substitution. I've got pi over 2 e to the 2y evaluated at 1 and 0. Right, e to the 2y 2 dy is e to the u du. So I just integrate, I get an e to the u, but what was u 2y, so I get e to the 2y. And then evaluate, so I get uh, pi over 2 times e to the second uh, minus e to the 0. So I get uh, pi over 2 times e squared minus 1. Remember what I had last time, e squared plus 1. So, so the next thing in my test is I say, well, it should make sense. What you got should make sense. Uh, if you take that exterior volume, right, and the interior volume and add them together, it should make sense, okay? Because uh, if you think about it, if you think about it, if I if I took this uh, area, right, uh, so if I took the area from ln of x to e, if I got this green area, right, and I took the area from 0 to 1, right, uh, in here, well, when I rotate that whole thing around, I get a solid can of whatever, water chestnuts. Right? When I rotate that whole thing around, I've got a solid volume now. Now, I've got my green volume, right? The green volume uh, was uh, pi over 2. Oops, pi over, was it pi over 2? Yeah, e squared plus 1. Right, and I got the purple volume. And that was pi over 2 uh, e squared minus 1. And I'm saying it should make sense uh, when I add them together that I get a solid cylinder. So, so what's the volume of the cylinder? Well, I, I, I need the volume of a cylinder. I need it to be, it's a pi r squared times, it's right, it's pi r squared. The base is a circle times h, right? And so I know uh, h is 1 here, right? The, ho the, the height of this can is 1. I know the radius is e, right? And so I'm done. So my volume of my cylinder is uh, pi e squared. And I'm saying I should be able to add the green and the purple regions volumes together and get the same result. So what happens when I when I get uh, 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 yeah v1 plus v2 right uh, v1 v2. So I get uh, pi over two times e squared plus one uh, plus pi over two times e squared minus one. And it should be pretty obvious. I factor out the pi over 2. I get e squared plus 1 plus e squared minus 1, right? The 1s go away, and I get 2 e squared inside. I get pi over 2 times 2 e squared. And the 2s cancel, and I get the same cylinder. What do you think? This method all set? We are pretty clear on this method. Nice. What's what's the main difference between disk and washer? 
instead of a pi r squared, I'm going to have a pi times capital R squared minus little r squared, right? I'm going to I'm going to take an outer circle and subtract off an inner circle. So um, I don't know if I really have to go over washer. I don't think I ever put one on the final, but if you want me to, let me know. Uh, I, I, I think the setup is the same. I guess it would be kind of interesting to see if we could get uh, uh, get the, the same green area using the washer method. Why don't, why don't we try that? Oh, that doesn't look good, no. It's the squaring of a function that gets weird. When I, when I square a function, it gets a little bit weird. Uh, so ln squared of x is not, not that nice <laughs> to integrate. Um, sine squared is fine. So we'll, we'll do one more with sine squared at, at the end of class after I finish the review. David, go ahead. Would it, would it be, uh, shoot, e minus, if we're doing the, you're talking about doing the disk over the y-axis, wouldn't that be... Yeah, e, so that so I'm talking right. about that green area, right? I'm talking about that yeah. green area, and mm -hmm. I'm rotating it here. Oh no, no, you're right. No, no, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I'd have to use because if I want a disk method, I'd have to use this rectangle, right? So I'd have to use an x two minus an x. So my biggest radius is x sub two. My smallest radius is x sub one. And the problem with that x sub 1, oh, it's not too bad. You're right, it's not bad at all. That that curve is E, not yeah. ln. If it was the other way, it would be terrible, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, this is ln. ln of x. But but, but but you're right, because if because when I do convert to x's, it becomes an e to the 2y. Right, I'm sorry, e to the y, and then I square it, I get an e to the 2y. It's not horrible to do this one with a disk. Uh, sorry, with a washer. Uh, and it should be the same volume. So, so why don't we do that? Okay, let's do it. It's not, it's not too much. So I want to take that region uh, here, this green region, and I want to rotate it around the y-axis, and I want to use a disk method, washer method. Well, how do I know it's going to be a washer? Well, first of all, shells are parallels, so I have to draw the rectangle that I want right perpendicular to the axis of revolution and then I have to I want to try and, and visualize once I rotate this what the cross section looks like right so what does that cross section look like well it looks like a coin but there's a hole in it right so I'm going to need that outer radius and the inner radius. Oops. <laughs> nice picture. So I'm going to get the area pi r squared with the big radius, get the area for the little circle pi r squared and subtract them, right? So when I'm doing washer, I'm, I'm stacking coins, and these coins have holes in them, right? These coins have holes in them. So I'm going to get that volume uh, from 0 to 1, right? Because I'm, I'm moving in the delta y direction. Uh, I need pi, and I need a capital radius, a capital R, and a lowercase r. So my capital R is is the distance from the center from the axis of revolution all the way to the edge and that's e right so r squared is going to be e squared i need the lower radius here again from the center from the axis of revolution to that the closer piece so little r i already figured out was e to the y so little r squared is e to the 2y Right, we had done that before. And so now I'm looking at uh, 
e squared minus e to the 2y dy. How is that for everybody? How are we doing? Everyone okay? Now, nice, Charlene. Thank you. So now these integrals are easy. We've already done the worst one out of it. The first part is just a, a e squared. That's just a constant. So I get e squared y. And the second one we've already figured out. It's a, a one half of e to the two y, and we're evaluating at one and zero. So because I just did the e to the 2y before, I'm not doing that whole u sub again. Uh, so when I plug in uh, 1, I get uh, e to the 2y times 1 minus 1 half e to the 2. And when I plug in 0, I get uh, e to the e squared times 0 minus 1 half uh, e to the 0. Looking pretty promising. Looks like I get e squared minus half of e squared plus a half. So I get e squared over 2 plus a half, and there it is, same volume, pi over 2 times e squared plus 1. Let me take a, a quick break, okay? Five minutes only, um, and then I'll come right back. Let me pause my recording. Uh, review uh, improper integrals. One of the things I see a lot in the midterm is you not writing this integral as a, um, as a, a limit, right? And so you're going to lose points if you don't write it as a limit. So I need you to write it as a, a limit, evaluate it as a limit. <coughs> Excuse me. And I, I typically like... Uh, a problem uh, that combines improper's uh, with uh, volumes. So I'll, I'll ask you something in that fashion. So, but we can imagine. <coughs> excuse me. Sorry about that. That we're doing this integral from one to infinity of some function, right? And um, we're interested in converges or diverges. What do you think I'm going to ask you to do on the test? I, I don't care about diverges. I mean, it's interesting, right? It's interesting to know that we can't solve a problem, but then we're going back. We're going back into the think tank to figure about how, how we can design uh, to figure out if the problem is even solvable, right? And you're, you're going to have some beautiful, unsolvable problems in your life. Oh, they're the best. Unsolvable problems are the best when you figure them out. Right? You're going to have a boss saying to you, let's cure cancer. <laughs> right? Right now, unsolvable. I mean, we're doing good things, right? Uh, uh, you're going to have a boss that say, we're going to build a tunnel 
uh, under the Bay Bridge, right? Um, cool stuff. You're gonna you're gonna have someone saying, "All right, we've got this computer program, but I need you to cut the speed in half, right?" Uh, I want I want it running at twice the speed. So, so the unsolvable problems when you get them are, are just they're just fantastic. Um, so, but we're 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 going to be dealing with conversions, right? We've already got these models uh, for cell count or amount of of uh, 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 a vaccine in the body or you know something like that so so we're really interested in um the ones that converge so we get, but the th thing here is we want to write this as a limit and you can use any letter you want right so from one to a of f of x dx and then you're going to find that antiderivative in your normal fashion it's probably going to be by parts for me but then you're going to evaluate the limit, and L'Hopital's rule should come into play, right? So solve, so solve the, so write as a, so one, uh, write as a limit. First thing you should do. Well, maybe, maybe step zero. Look at the, look at the area, right? Uh, write as a limit. Yeah. Uh, step two. Uh, find the antiderivative, right? Evaluate the integral. Uh, evaluate the limit. Uh, you will have to use L'Hopital's rule. I'm going to make you use L'Hopital's rule. Show me that you're using L'Hopital's rule. Put a little note there. Show me that you're doing derivatives, or show me that you're, you know what I mean? Evaluate the limit. Uh, possibly using a little hop, right? Um, and then uh, decide on convergence or divergence. And for us, it'll, it, it, it'll be convergent. Uh, uh, I, you know, it's more interesting for you to tell me the volume than to tell me there is no volume. Or the, I'm sorry, better yet, the volume can't be found. Right. So that's it for improper integrals. What it, and what do I see most often? You're not writing as a limit. I want it written as a limit. And I'll say it in the directions, and if you don't write it as a limit, I'm not I'm taking points off, right? Um, what do I see often? If you have to do L'Hopital's rule, you're not telling me you're doing L'Hopital's rule. I mean, it'd be really nice to tell me why you need L'Hopital's rule, and then show me how you do L'Hopital's rule, derivative over derivative, and then reevaluate, right? Um, Um, yeah, it, it's just simply saying if I have the limit as uh, x goes to a of f of x over g of x, and I get a, a 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, then uh, the limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x equals uh, the limit as uh, x goes to a, x goes to a of f prime of x over g prime of x. I just take the derivative up top and the derivative at the bottom, not the quotient rule. Um, and 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 I can keep doing that if I keep getting infinity or infinity or zero over zero. I, I repeat the process, right? Is that is that was that Josh? Yes. Yeah, is, is that helpful at all, or, or is that too abstract? So 
is used to prevent from getting zero or infinity as your answer? Uh, no, it still can get zero as a limit at the end or infinity as an answer at the end. But the key is if I get one of those indeterminate forms on the way to getting the limit, then I do derivatives and reevaluate the limit. So let me let, I think. yeah let me, let me do a problem and that that should help a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so I, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I had a good one on last semester's test. So let me open that because I didn't, I know I didn't do all of those solutions. Uh, oh no, fall 2020, I didn't do all of those solutions. Um, Uh, no, not on there. Let's look at last semester's test. Oh, here. Here's one. Um, yeah, it says consider the following area rotated about the x-axis to create a volume using the disk method. Does the volume converge? So I'm looking at number five on... Uh, I forget. <laughs> be nice if I had these labeled a little bit better, but let me just see what it's saying here in the title. Damn, what the hell? Um, oh, this is a, a spring 2021. Yeah, final exam A, right? Let me just make sure. Yes. So this is uh, final exam A from spring 2021. So last semester. Um, and looking at number five here. So so what's, what's hinting uh, that I'm doing improper here? What's the hint? Infinity as the yeah. upper bound. Exactly. They got a, I, so I'm, I, I tend to... Uh, you know, I could have, uh, so like the integral from 0 to 1 of ln of x dx is improper. Uh, and the integral uh, from 1 to infinity of e to the minus x dx is improper, right? And if, if you're, you're just looking at, is there a vertical asymptote or is there a horizontal asymptote at, at one of the endpoints of, of Right where you're evaluating the in integral, it could happen at both endpoints too, but I don't, I, I, I never put one on like that. So I didn't do any examples like that in class, and I never test on it. Uh, but it could happen at both endpoints. Uh, but this is, so I'm looking at either. So this one you see, ln of x has got a, a vertical asymptote when x goes to zero. And e to the minus x has got a horizontal asymptote when x goes to infinity. So those are, you know, type of improper integrals. But let's do the one that we have here. Um, so it says that I'm talking about the improper integral from uh, of rad square root of ln of x all over x. So probably the first thing I want to do is look at that picture, right? So I'm going to my calculator because that's what you're going to have. I go into my y equal. And I put in that function. So square square root of the ln of x. I gotta close my parentheses. I have to escape the square root and divide by x. I want to take a look at my graph. And I probably want to zoom standard. Typically I'll say zoom standard on things until you and see if you get a good picture. It's not a great picture. <laughs> it's not a great picture, but let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. So I want to zoom in, and then my calculator prompts me to where do you want to zoom in. I'm going to go about halfway on my on my axis over here. 
Nice. I went a little too far. But I got a pretty good idea of the region. It looks like the top half of a rutabaga or a carrot to me. So at one, right? And it's doing something like this. So it's like a, it's like a, uh, so that's my area, right? And so I can, I can kind of see, I don't have the color orange. Can I add an orange? Sorry, I'm wasting time. So, so if I rotate that around, I'm, 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 I'm seeing, right, some stalk, root vegetable, carrot. I see a carrot. So, I've got y equals the square root of the ln of x all over x. And I want to find this volume. What did I say? I, I'm interested in does the volume converge using a disk method, right? And rotate it around the x-axis. So I'm rotating around the x-axis and I'm using a disk method. I know my rectangle's got to be perpendicular, right? Um, and I'm going to get a bunch of coins, right? You can see a, a whole bunch of coins stacked together here, right? So I'm getting the volume uh, by pi uh, uh, from 1 to infinity of r squared, right? So square root of ln of x all over x all squared dx. Is that is that clear to everybody? Agreeable. All right, Josh, nice. So remember, I want to write this as a limit. So this is the limit as a goes to infinity of pi times the integral from 1 to a of, what do I have now, ln of x over x squared dx, right? I squared the square root, they cancel, square the x, they get x squared. And so now I'm ready, uh, so I'm going to keep this limit going as I go, but I want to do this integral, and this is uh, by parts, right? So I'm doing this integral by parts. So what's u? ln of x. What do you know? du is 1 over x dx. And dv, or v, is the integral of 1 over x squared dx, which is negative 1 over x. I did that kind of quick. Is that OK? Nice. So I get uh, uh, v u u v right. So minus one over x ln of x um, minus integral of v du. V is already negative, so I'm going to get a positive integral of uh, one over x times one over x dx. Evaluated at a and then at one. How are we there? Now, pi can come out of my limit, so I'm going to let it come out. I, I, I can evaluate the limit without the constant involved. Um, I've got minus 1 over x, ln of x. And then this integral, this is 1 over x squared again, right? And we already did that. I, already, I know I get a minus 1 over x from that. This particular one, I like to do backward. I like to evaluate at 1 first and change all my signs, and then evaluate at A and, and not change my signs. But you, you can do it any way you want. So I get pi times uh, 1 times the ln of 1 minus, sorry, plus 1 over 1, right? And then evaluate at A, but, but with the limit, right? Uh, so minus the limit as a goes to infinity 
uh, 1 over a ln of a plus 1 over a. So re remember, when you evaluate at a, you keep the signs. And when you evaluate at 1, you would change the signs. And I just put them first so that I can have a nice clean version of my limit at the end. Uh, and this is nice because ln of 1 is 0, right? Um, so I can see I'm going to get pi times 1 minus this limit. Well, it's the, that second limit here, I'll highlight it in green, right? That second limit is easy. 1 divided by a very, very large number goes to 0, right? So I'm really, I'm really talking about uh, pi times 1 minus the limit as a goes to infinity of ln of a over a. Right, I can put a little note since... The limit as a goes to infinity of 1 over a equals 0, right? Something like that, anything you want. If you don't put that explanation there, I, I know you know that limit 0. That's, calc that's first, uh, first week of Calc 1 limit. <laughs> so this one, what happens? What happens to ln of a as a goes to infinity? Well, it goes to infinity, right? And what happens to a as a goes to infinity? It goes to infinity, duh. It looks like a is going to infinity faster. If I look at those two graphs, right, this is y equals a, this is y equals ln of a. So I'm thinking the denominator moves faster in this case, right? So if you had me for calc 1, we, we, we said when the denominator grows faster, we know we're going to get a limit of 0. But we want to do L'Hopital's rule here, right? So I, I, I see that I get infinity over infinity, so I want to apply a little hop here. Uh, 1 minus the limit as a goes to infinity of 1 over a over minus 1 over a squared. Right? I took the derivative of top and bottom. That's L'Hopital's rule. Oh, sorry. Not a 1 over a over no, no. One. ln of a is 1 over a and a is 1. Thank you, Charlie. Oh, but this is 1 over a again. Right? So this is so I get pi times 1 minus 0, so I get pi. Nice, converges. So look at what I did there. I did an improper from chapter 5. Chapter five with a L'Hopital's from chapter 4, uh, with a, a, a disk method uh, from chapter 6, right? Um, so, and that's what I'm, I'm trying to do. I'm trying to put things together like that so I can make sure I test you on everything. Can you do an example of a separable equation? Sure, absolutely. I think I did this one already, right? The one I'm showing on the screen. I think yeah, I, I, I did that one yesterday. Let me do another one, right? Um, give me a second here.
Well, let me just make one up. I can't, I can't seem to find one quickly, so let me just make one up. Uh, give me one second here. Okay, here we go. Sorry. Well, I guess I can't put this one on the test now. I'm just going to have to make another one. Uh, so let's look at a separable, separate. So I've got dy uh, square root of 1 minus x squared equals y x to the fourth. I'm sorry, y prime, right? And I'm going to, of course, turn it into a dy over dx. So there it is. I see I'm multiplying <laughs> my things. I'm multiplying y's and y primes to functions of x. It's just what I need, right? Multiplying or dividing is, is what I need. So uh, my first process is dy dx, right? And then, and then what's the thought? I want all my y terms on one side by, by multiplying or dividing. I want all my x terms on the other side by multiplying or dividing, right? Eleanor, no problem, right? Up to this point. So I get uh, 1 over y dy equals x to the fourth over square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Well, the left side's easy to integrate, right? And but that's our that's our next process. But is everybody with me here? Is everyone okay here? So I'm going to integrate both sides, right? And the left side is pretty easy. Ln of the absolute value of y. Remember, eventually I want to solve for y, right? And my other side is a little complicated. Who sees anything? Who sees something? Can we do a trig substitute with that side? Exactly. And what's making you think that it's a trig sub? The square root of 1 minus x. There you x go. So I'm seeing a leg of a right triangle. If I see a hypotenuse of a right triangle or a leg of a right triangle, that's an option, right? That's definitely an option. So um, I can see my hypotenuse is 1. Does anybody not see that the hypotenuse is 1? And then I see that I have the, the height of the right triangle open, and I know that I'm trying to make the hypotenuse or the height x if I can. Because Why? Because Robert said so. Because Why would Robert say so? Because it makes your integration a tiny bit easier, if only to get rid of negatives. So, so I've got an x here, and then by the Pythagorean theorem, it's I, I find this other leg, but I already know I have a leg of a right triangle there. Uh, so what are the things I have to define? Well, I definitely need an x because I have an x to the fourth. And, it, and I have a dx, so again, I need an x. In order to get a dx, I need an x. And then I also need a square root of 1 minus x squared. How is everybody there? You see that? That's everything I need. 
Well, I need an x to the fourth. Well, how do I get an x to the fourth? I need an x, right? And I need a dx. So how do I get Well, I need an x. Okay, good. And then I have one other piece, square root of 1 minus x squared, right? So x is clearly from my triangle sine of theta. And so x to the fourth is sine uh, fourth of theta. And dx is what derivative of sine is cos of theta d theta. And the square root of 1 minus x squared, well, that's the cos of theta. Nice. So, right, when we're doing these improper's, we're deciding do I have a, a hypotenuse or a leg of a right triangle. Find out the hypotenuse, figure out the other sides, trying to have x turn out to be a hypotenuse or a height if you can. Um, then define all the pieces that you need to make your trig sub, right? So, and don't forget the dx, because the dx is what students usually forget. So now I have the ln of the absolute value of y is the integral of sine to the fourth of theta times cos of theta d theta all over cos of theta. All right. Love it. It's too bad I used this problem. Does this become a power reduction now? And now power reduction. <laughs> evil, evil, evil Robert. Right? I know. The good thing is you'll never have to do this stuff again for the rest of your life. And maybe you've learned something. Maybe you've learned maybe you've learned some calculus. Who cares, honestly? You're not gonna do any calculus on the field. Uh someone else is for your project um, and you're going to have to talk to them so that's one reason to take all this calculus the other is to know that there's math behind how things are changing in your experiments or in your or in the in the structure of a building or right uh, the other is to challenge yourself to do something very difficult which is going to what you're going to be doing at work you're going to you're going to be challenged and you you're not going to be afraid of it. And you're going to kick butt. Right? So, th so this is my power reduction now. So I have a sine squared theta all squared d theta. And that power reduction for that sine squared is 1 minus cos theta all over 2. Uh, I'm sorry. Cos of right? No, 1 minus cos 2 theta, right? Help me there, please, somebody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I'm going to square it. It's really a shame I didn't save this one for you for the test, huh? So when I square it at 2, it gives me a 1 fourth. And I'm going to get 1 minus 2 cos of 2 theta plus cos squared of 2 theta all d theta how are we doing here ellen are you, you sorry you asked <laughs> oh god i can't believe he's done this one uh i'm i'm going to divide and conquer here so split this into three integrals, and then I have another uh, power reduction to do, right? So I'm going to move my 4 to the other side right now, just, just so I don't have to keep writing it. 4 ln of y now, right? And I've got the integral of 1 d theta minus the integral of uh, 2 cos 2 theta uh, plus the integral of cos squared 2 theta d theta. So 4 times the ln of the absolute value of y equals theta, right? Uh, what's the antiderivative of cosine? It's positive sine. So minus 2 times 1 half of sine 2 theta. And then I've got uh, uh, another power reduction to do. 1 plus cos of 4 theta all over 2 
D theta. How is that? Make sure I'm, I haven't lost any of you. Uh, it looks like I can do. Um... Professor. Yes. I think it's the cos two theta is uh, isn't it cos squared theta minus sine squared theta? Yes, but then I then I have to do two power reductions. So I did a power reduction from here to here. Right? I reduced the power, and when you reduce the power, an even power, you double your angle. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about the middle part, negative 2 cos 2 theta. Yes, so so the anti, so cosine antiderivative is po is positive sine. And then I did a quick u sub. I had a, I had a 1 half, uh, I'm sorry, I had a 2 inside. I needed a 2 theta, d, 2 d theta, and I canceled with a 2 on the outside. So I'm, in, I'm integrating. You're you're trying to do a trig sub there, and I'm I'm saying I, I don't need to. I'm I'm saying let me just integrate. Let me do a u sub and integrate. Okay. Yeah. So this is not bad. I'm going to multiply by two. So two times the ln of the absolute value of four equals two theta uh, minus two sine two theta. Uh, plus the integral of 1 plus cos 4 theta, all d theta. And it, you don't have to do that. I, I'm just doing it to clear fractions away from my, my integration. That's it. Um, nice, so I have another divide and conquer here, right? So 8 ln of absolute value of y equals 2 theta minus 2 sine 2 theta plus d theta, integral of d theta plus the integral of cos of 4 theta d theta. All right, so the integral of d theta is just theta, so I'm going to get 8 ln of absolute value of y equals 3 theta minus 2 sine 2 theta uh, plus 1 fourth antiderivative of cosine is sine so 1 fourth sine of 4 theta and I did again I did that u sub in my head let's just ignore the constant for me please because it's horrible and and so so now I've got I've got a little bit of work to do here I've got a little bit of work to do I got to get back to the triangle, right? So I've got to get back to the triangle. So I need a theta. Well, I know sine of theta is x, so theta is arc sine of x. And I know sine 2 theta is 2, two theta, 2 sine theta cos theta. So I'm going to convert back here. So I have 3 arc sine of x minus 2 times 2 sine theta cos theta. Uh, plus one fourth of two times sine four, uh, sorry, sine two theta cos two theta. <laughs> Horrible. And now I'm going to use those trig identities. We got six minutes. It's going to be close. So minus four sine theta, which I have a trig for. I have a sub for. I have a cos theta plus a one half times two sine theta cos theta. I have those times a cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. That's name of that's where I'm using that that trig sub finally. Well, all of these I have a, a, a triangle for, so I can. I can, I can start to go into my triangle here a little bit. 
sine sine theta is already x, right? So I, I know most of this. 8 ln of absolute value of y equals 3 arc sine of x minus 4. Sine is x, and cos is square root of 1 minus x squared, right? Uh, plus uh, x square root of 1 minus square root of 1 minus x squared square root of 1 minus x squared squared minus x squared. Oh, it's getting there. That's pretty nasty. Well, I guess it's good I didn't put this one to the test, right? Uh, I'm going to distribute here. So I'm going to get x times 1 minus x squared to the 3 halves uh, minus x cubed to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Can I combine anything here? Not really. I mean, yes and no. It's not perfect. But I can see that I'm going to divide by 8. Right? I'm going to raise both sides base E and then plus minus. So I'm finally going to get Y equals plus or minus E raised to the 3 arc sine of X minus 4 X square roots of 1 minus X squared plus X times 1 minus X squared to the 3 halves power minus x cubed square root of 1 minus x squared, all divided by 8. Done. Plus C. Plus, plus C would have turned into a, an A here. And I just said, let's forget the constant for now. Right? Now you're nervous. Now that I did that problem, you're nervous. I can't put that on the test. Can you at least uh, put the list of steps on how to do this one? <laughs> well, like the other one you yeah, did? no, we did. We did yet yesterday. I did the separable. I said, uh, I said, uh, rewrite, right? Rewrite uh, y prime as dy dx, right? Uh, then multiply and divide things to isolate y's and isolate x's, right? Uh, multiply and divide uh, uh, to get, you know, g of y's dy uh, equal f of x dx, right? Get Get all your y terms on the side with the dy by multiplying or dividing. And all your functions of x on the other side by multiplying and dividing. And then integrate, right? Solve for y. I like when I when I do a really horrible question the day before the test because it gets me to it gets me to make sure I don't give you anything that horrible. Uh, on the exam. I mean, honestly, I was thinking about putting that one on the exam. Uh, yeah, didn't you say you, you got this one from the exam? Or have you no, made no, it? I just, I, I it, it's on my scrap paper. So, so well, my test is written. I have to type it oh. up, and then I go, and then I do all the solutions to make sure nothing is hideous. Um, so, you know, a couple of the problems we did were very, very close to the problems on the exam, so I'm going to change those, right? I'm going to change those, but it's still I have to type it up, make sure I do it, and then uh, um, make sure it's fair. Nothing super tricky like number one on, on, on the midterm. Nice. Yes, yes. Juan, what's up? Uh, how many questions will be in the, I, the I, test? I've got five written on my paper. Oh, okay. And so that's, uh, what, 20, is it, how many, five into 60 is what, 
15? No, help me, 12. And then double that is 24. So you'll, you, you should have 24 minutes per question. Okay. One, one or two will be quicker than the others, of course. So you save a little time on those. Well, I was um, go ahead, a little nervous about the use of inseparable equations. Is it likely we're going to have to have that on the test? Like, like a calc 1 u sub? No, like the like u equals x minus y. Oh, no, no, no u sub uh, separables. I, I decided to take that off because if I put that on, I really want the slope field on. And it just takes up too, mu too much room. I, I want the test to fit nicely on your computer screen so you don't have to fuss with it. You don't have to scroll. Okay. And, yeah. It, it's COVID. It's COVID testing, you know. It's, it's um, I'm just trying to do things to make it easier, one, to proctor and, and uh, for, for, maybe that's it, just easier to proctor. I can whenever I order lobster I don't I don't ever share I'm very shellfish in terms of some things but guess what <laughs> we're done so tomorrow morning I try, I try and be there a little bit early to, in case anything doesn't work out you're logged into web assign ready right you, when you're logged into web sign, you're logged into nothing else. Phones plugged in, charged on, on do not disturb mode. You got all your paper, your pencils. You got whatever piece of gum, a cup of tea, whatever you want to have, right? Uh, your formula sheet all nicely done, and then you're going to take photos of everything, including the formula sheet. Send it to me. Send it to yourself, make sure it's correct, and then just forward to me. Make sure it's an attachment. I don't want to have to go download something from wherever you would store it, Office 360 or whatever. Make sure it's attached to the email. Um, I'm proud of you all. I know you're going to do well. I know you're going to do well tomorrow. I know you'll do better than the midterm. 50, over 50% 50 of my class did better on their final than the midterm last semester. So uh, I'm expecting at least, if not more than that this time. So that will help. Um, get some sleep. Have your favorite breakfast tomorrow. You know, get up early, have your favorite breakfast. You know, whatever. Whatever's going to get your brain at the, at the ultimate, you know, at the peak level of uh, performance, right? All right, I'm going to be around till 1.30 today, so feel free to stick around for a quick question or uh, come back if you if it's a longer session, All right? Um, so see you tomorrow. Proud of you. 7.45, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, qu yeah, quarter of 10 of is good. Huh. Thank you, Robert. Okay, you got it. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Professor. You got it. Thank you.